हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम मिस्टर आदिश देश पांडे फ्रॉम फर्ग्यूसन कॉलेज वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस चैप्टर नंबर थ्री दैट इज आयोनिक इक्विलिब्रियम स्टूडेंट्स लास्ट ईयर वी स्टडीड केमिकल इक्विलिब्रियम सो इट इज अ कैरेक्टरिस्टिक प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ अ रिवर्सिबल केमिकल रिएक्शन वेयर रेट ऑफ फॉरवर्ड रिएक्शन इज एक्जैक्टली इक्वल टू द रेट ऑफ द रिवर्स रिएक्शन and no further change in the concentrations of reactants and the products occur with time so this state of a reversible reaction is called as chemical equilibrium so last year we studied chemical equilibrium some of the characteristics also we know the important one is point of equilibrium is always dynamic in nature that is at equilibrium neither forward nor a reverse reaction stop both the reactions occur with their characteristic equal rates and so the point of equilibrium is always dynamic in nature so by changing the equilibrium conditions it is possible to shift the point of the equilibrium so these are properties or characteristics of chemical equilibrium we already studied last year we also know law of mass action with the help of which it is possible to calculate characteristic constant that is equilibrium constant of a reversible chemical reaction actually this law of mass action tells us how to find out rate of any chemical reaction so at a given temperature and at a given instant rate of any chemical reaction is directly proportional to the product of the active masses of the reactants active masses means concentrations of the reactants whenever expressed in the units of moles per liter or moles per dm cube that is molar concentrations of the reactants are considered so in case of this general reversible reaction a a plus b b reversibly gives c c plus d d if we apply law of mass action we will end up with the characteristic constant that is equilibrium constant k c which is equal to active mass of c raised to c into active mass of d raised to d upon active mass of a raised to a into active mass of b raised to b so last year we studied this chemical equilibrium now let us consider ionic equilibrium so ionic equilibrium it is a special case of chemical equilibrium where ions are involved in a reversible chemical reaction either on the reactant side or on the product side and so the equilibrium between ions and unionized molecules of a substance in its solution is called as ionic equilibrium whatever general conditions and characteristic properties of chemical equilibrium that we studied last year all those properties and characteristics they are applicable to ionic equilibrium also so here is the example i considered here dissociation of acetic acid so acetic acid whenever dissolved in water it dissociates partially producing acetate ions and h plus ions and a point of equilibrium is attained between dissociated and undissociated molecules of acetic acid so as this equilibrium involves ions this is called as ionic equilibrium so we will deal with this ionic equilibrium in this chapter now electrolyte this term is also familiar to you any substance in the molten state or fused state or whenever that substance is dissolved in water producing ions if we conduct electricity or if we pass electric current through this solution or the substance in the molten state then if it conducts electricity 
then it is called an electrolyte. For example, fused NaCl, that is molten NaCl, or copper sulfate solution. In both these cases, ions are present and these ions conduct electricity and therefore these are our electrolytes. Now electrolytes can be generally classified into two types as strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes. In case of strong electrolytes, there is almost complete dissociation. Whatever substance is taken, the whole of it forms ions. So large number of ions are present. So ionic concentration is very high. This reaction is always irreversible. That means it proceeds only in one direction. And so this reaction is complete. Examples are all salts. Now in addition to this, strong acids and strong bases are also the part of these strong electrolytes. Because these strong acids and strong bases, whenever are dissolved in water, they completely dissociate into ions and these ions can conduct electricity and therefore these are also our electrolytes. Now if we consider weak electrolytes, then in case of weak electrolytes, there is always a partial or incomplete dissociation. So when acetic acid, it is a weak acid, so if it is dissolved in water, then large number of molecules of acetic acid remain behind undissociated because equilibrium is attained when between dissociated and undissociated molecules of acetic acid. And so as point of equilibrium is attained between dissociated and undissociated molecules of acetic acid, molecular concentration is very high ionic concentration is less and so this reaction is always reversible and it is always incomplete. All weak acids and weak bases are the examples of weak electrolytes. Now this term degree of dissociation alpha, this gives us the classification of electrolytes as strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes. So this is a mathematical parameter to find out which electrolyte is strong or which electrolyte is weak. So if suppose I have taken one mole of any substance and if suppose it is dissolved in water, then out of this one mole, 0.2 mole of that substance is dissociated. That is it forms its ions and equilibrium is established between dissociated and undissociated molecules. Then we know that according to the conditions of equilibrium, there will be no change in the concentrations of reactants and the products that occur with time once equilibrium point is attained. So before equilibrium is attained, 0.2 mole of that substance are dissociated and remaining molecules that is 0.8 moles they remain undissociated so to calculate alpha if we consider the mathematical expression on the right hand side then alpha is equal to number of moles dissociated upon total number of moles present so number of moles dissociated are 0.2 total number of moles taken are 1 so 0.2 upon 1 that is equal to 0.2 so alpha in this case is 0.2 this is how alpha can be calculated and so degree of dissociation alpha it is defined as fraction of total number of moles of an electrolyte that dissociates into ions when equilibrium is attained so this is the definition of alpha now alpha can be obtained in the form of percentage so the two formulae are also given percentage alpha is equal to alpha into 100 or to calculate alpha from percentage alpha alpha is equal to percentage alpha upon 100 so this is the term which is 
required to classify or to identify which electrolyte is strong and which electrolyte is weak. Now let's switch over to the first part of the chapter where we are going to discuss some of the theories of acids and bases, conceptual theories of acids and bases. Now in this part, we are going to find out the definition of acid and definition of base which was given by various scientists. Before we enter, now in the laboratory, how we find out the substance as acid or how we predict the substance as base. Then for acidic substance, there are two tests or the two things that we usually consider that if the substance turns blue litmus paper red or if the solution turns blue litmus paper red or if it neutralizes any base, then we call that substance as acid. Similarly, if another solution is given where red litmus turns blue and if it turns or if it neutralizes acid, then we call that solution as base. So here are some of the experimental parameters which are given with the help of which we can generally classify the substances as acid or the substances as base. So for acid, it tests the sore, turns blue litmus red, neutralizes base, liberates hydrogen gas with active metals like magnesium, decomposes carbonates to produce carbon dioxide and water. Examples are HCl that is hydrochloric acid, citric acid, etc. Similarly, any base it tests bitter, it turns red litmus blue, neutralizes acid, soapy to touch, absorbs carbon dioxide to form carbonates. Examples are NaOH that is sodium hydroxide, MgOH twice that is magnesium hydroxide. So these are called as experimental definitions, classical definitions or general definitions of acids and bases. Now the very first theory is Arrhenius theory of acids and bases. So what is the definition of acid according to Arrhenius theory? Acid is any hydrogen containing compound which in water solution that is aqueous solution produces hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions are H plus ions. So here are the examples. For example, HCl aqueous that is HCl is dissolved in water. Then HCl is the substance which contains hydrogen and whenever it is dissolved in water it produces H plus ions. So in the equation it is very clear that HCl aqueous gives H plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. So HCl is our Arrhenius acid. Similarly the second example acetic acid CH3COOH aqueous reversibly gives CH3COO minus aqueous plus H plus aqueous. So acetic acid also contains hydrogen and whenever dissolved in water it produces H plus ions. So it is our Arrhenius acid. Now what is Arrhenius base? A base is a hydroxyl group containing compound. Hydroxyl group is OH group which in water solution or aqueous solution produces hydroxyl ions. Hydroxyl ions are OH minus ions. So any such substance is our Arrhenius base. For example, NaOH aqueous, sodium hydroxide. So NaOH whenever dissolved in water produces Na plus and OH minus ions. So hydroxyl group is present in the compound and it produces OH minus ions in the aqueous solution. So it is our Arrhenius base. Another example is NH4OH aqueous reversibly gives NH4 plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous. So very simple definitions. Now some of the points that you have to remember as far as Arrhenius theory is concerned. So acids and bases they are defined in terms of their aqueous solutions only. So this theory is limited only to the water solutions. Now according to this, this theory 
H plus ions are present in the aqueous solution as bare ions. Bare ions means free ions. But H plus ions always get hydrated in the aqueous solution. That is, they combine with water to form hydronium ions. So here is the equation which represents how hydronium ion is formed. So H plus ions plus surrounding water molecules. So there is a formation of coordinate covalent bond and it's a formation of hydronium ion that is H3O plus ion. Now certain substances do not contain hydrogen and do not produce H plus ions in water but their solutions are acidic. For example, carbon dioxide in water or sulfur dioxide in water. Remember, carbon dioxide is a gas. It does not contain hydrogen. But when carbon dioxide is dissolved in water, if you test with the litmus, then blue litmus paper turns red. That means it indicates presence of H plus ions. But since your substance does not contain hydrogen, According to Arrhenius theory, you cannot say that CO2 is Arrhenius acid. Similarly, if you take ammonia gas and this ammonia gas is dissolved in water and now again if you test with litmus paper then you will find that red litmus paper turns blue. This means OH minus ions are present. But in the substance ammonia NH3 there is no presence of hydroxyl group and so you cannot say that NH3 is Arrhenius base. So these are some of the points that you have to remember as far as Arrhenius theory is concerned. Now let's switch over to the second theory which is bronsted lorry theory of acids and bases. Now according to bronsted lorry theory, which substance is acid? An acid is a substance which donates a proton that is H plus ions to any other substance in a chemical reaction. So acid is a proton donor. So proton is H plus ion. So when proton is donated, that is H plus ion is donated to any other substance in a chemical reaction, it is called as Bronsted acid. Similarly, what is Bronsted base? A base is a substance which accepts a proton, that is H plus ions, from any other substance in a chemical reaction. So a base is a proton acceptor. So when H plus ions are accepted by any substance in a chemical reaction, it is called as Bronsted base. So as the theory involves donation of proton or acceptance of proton, theory is also called as protonic theory. So the examples of Bronsted acid and Bronsted base are given. Now let's consider what is conjugate acid base pair. So the pair of substances which differ by means of a proton that is H plus ion is known as conjugate acid base pair or acid base pair which can be formed from each other mutually by gain or loss of a proton is known as conjugate acid base pair. Now this can be explained with the help of an example. So let us concentrate on the example that is a chemical reaction HCl plus H2O reversibly gives H3O plus plus Cl minus. Now if you consider the half reaction then the first half reaction is HCl reversibly gives H plus plus Cl minus and second half reaction is H plus plus H2O reversibly gives H3O plus. So this means that HCl donates a proton to water. Now according to Bronsted theory, proton donor is Bronsted acid. So HCl is our Bronsted acid. Now this H plus ion donated by HCl is accepted by water and it forms hydronium ion. So proton acceptor according to Bronsted theory is our Bronsted base. So H2O is Bronsted base. Now remember students, whenever any Bronsted acid donates proton, which species result in this case? In this case, HCl gets converted into Cl- upon donating proton. 
so this species which result after donation of proton by any bronsted acid is called as its conjugate base similarly water is our base bronsted base upon accepting proton that base gets converted into acid called as conjugate acid so if you compare hcl and cl minus then in this case the difference is of only proton similarly if you compare h2o and h3o plus then difference is of only a proton and therefore hcl and cl minus as they differ only by means of a proton so hcl cl minus this pair is called as conjugate acid base pair similarly h2o and h3o plus these species they differ by means of only h plus ions and therefore this is called as another conjugate acid base pair so acid base pair which can be formed from each other mutually by gain or loss of a proton is known as conjugate acid base pair or the pair of substances which differ by means of a proton is known as conjugate acid base pair now we can take another example also nh3 plus h2o reversibly gives nh4 plus plus oh minus now let's write the first half reaction it is h2o reversibly gives h plus plus oh minus now here h2o donates proton so h2o is our bronsted acid upon donating proton it gets converted into oh minus it is called as conjugate base now in the second half reaction nh3 accepts h plus ions that is proton so nh3 is our bronsted base and it forms nh4 plus ions so it is called as conjugate acid so the two conjugate acid base pairs are first pair is nh4 plus nh3 second pair is h2o oh minus now according to bronsted lorry theory water can act as acid water can also act as base just in the earlier two cases we saw that along with hcl water acts as base and along with ammonia water acts as acid so water can act as acid in presence of base stronger than itself so ammonia is a stronger base than water so water acts as acid that means it donates proton and water can act as base in presence of acid stronger than itself so hcl is a stronger acid than water so in that case water acts as base and so such a substance is called as amphoteric substance so according to bronsted lorry theory water is amphoteric in nature so water can act as proton donor and proton acceptor and so this is called as amphoteric nature of water now the next theory is lewis theory of acids and bases now what is lewis acid an acid is any species that is atom ion or molecule which accepts a share in an electron pair to form a coordinate covalent bond or dative bond so here is the example given ammonia plus h plus ions so here nitrogen atom of ammonia contains a lone pair so this lone pair is donated to this h plus ion and there is a coordinate covalent bond between h plus and nitrogen atom of ammonia and the whole ion form is called as nh4 plus ion and so acid is any species atom ion or molecule which accepts a pair of electrons so here h plus ions accept a pair of electron forming dative bond and so h plus ions are called as lewis acids similarly what is lewis base base is any species that is atom ion or molecule that donates a pair of electrons 
inner chemical reaction to form a coordinate covalent bond. So, in the earlier example itself, as nitrogen atom of ammonia donates a pair of electrons, so this NH3 is called as Lewis base and as a result of which there is a formation of a coordination compound. Here is one more example given BF3 boron trifluoride plus NH3. So, again nitrogen atom of ammonia donates a pair of electrons to boron atom of boron trifluoride and there is a formation of a coordination compound. So, BF3 accepts a pair of electrons in a reaction forming coordinate bond. So, it is Lewis acid and nitrogen atom of ammonia donates a pair of electrons forming coordinate bond. It is called as Lewis base. Now, classification of Lewis acids. All cations are the examples of Lewis acids. So, cations are positively charged, electron deficient and so they accept a pair of electrons in a reaction to form compounds. So, they are electrophiles. So, here are the examples of all cations. Similarly, some of the neutral molecules, they are also Lewis acids. So, these are the compounds whose central atoms have less than 8 electrons in the valence shell and they contain vacant orbitals where electron pair is accepted. So, as can be seen in the earlier case BF3, so around the central boron atom there are only 6 electrons. So, boron has incomplete octet in BF3 and so boron can accept a pair of electrons. So, it is a neutral molecule but it is a Lewis acid. Few other examples are also given. Now, classification of Lewis bases. All anions are Lewis bases. Negatively charged ions, electron rich, they donate a pair of electrons in a reaction to form compounds. So, they are nucleophiles. So, these examples of anions are given. Similarly, there are some of the neutral molecules whose central atoms possess lone pairs of electrons and they donate the electron pair to form compounds. So, such neutral molecules are also the examples of Lewis bases. So, examples are ammonia, water, alcohols, amines. So, nitrogen atom contains lone pair in ammonia. Oxygen atom of water contains lone pairs. So, these lone pairs are required to complete the octet state. They are not directly involved in the bonding, but then they are donated to form coordinate covalent bond. So, these neutral molecules are also our Lewis bases. So, students, in this case or in this particular chapter, we are going to deal with the ionic equilibrium where we try to complete the conceptual theories of acids and bases. Thank you.